If you're suffering from hair loss, you probably know all about minoxidil. What you have almost certainly not heard about is adenosine. It's not approved for hair loss, but a number of studies have found that topical application can promote hair growth, similar to minoxidil. One study that compared it directly to minoxidil actually found its users were more satisfied with the treatment. It is also a naturally occurring compound, meaning that there are hardly any side effects. While all this makes adenosine an interesting proposition for treating hair loss, it is far from a magic bullet. And it won't work for everybody. So stay tuned to learn all about it in today's video. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So guys, let's get into it. What is adenosine? So adenosine is basically an adenine molecule attached to a sugar. And given how similar it is to adenine, you find it occurring naturally in all cells of the body. For example, in the cardiovascular system, it widens the blood vessels. Whereas in the central nervous system, it acts like a kind of neurotransmitter. Adenosine receptors are implicated in a variety of conditions, including Parkinson's disease, inflammation, disparity disorders, asthma, you name it. So compounds similar to adenosine are being investigated as new treatments for conditions ranging from pain, cancer, to diabetes, and even strokes. Now, if you're like most people, you get your daily shot of adenosine medication with your morning cup of coffee. Caffeine is chemically very similar to adenosine, so it blocks its receptors. And it is this effect that's thought to underlie its stimulant and mildly psychoactive properties. In 2012, a fascinating PET imaging study found that the caffeine equivalent of four to five cups of coffee can displace your endogenous adenosine by as much as 50% on certain receptors. So how does it work for hair loss? So adenosine actually works very similarly to minoxidil. Or let me rephrase that correctly. Minoxidil works very similar to adenosine. You see, one of the ways that minoxidil is thought to work is by increasing the production of vascular endothelial growth factor or VGF. VGEF is a signaling protein that promotes angiogenesis, the formation of blood vessels. It's also critical in the regulation of the hair growth cycle and size of hair follicles. And the way minoxidil upregulates VGF is via an adenosine pathway, or at least that's a very strong hypothesis at this point. There have also been some interesting in vitro studies of adenosine with human dermal papilla cells. These are the cells in the follicle that are critical in determining the follicle's development and size. And adenosine, in vitro at least, upregulates these cells' expression of so-called fibroblast growth factor 7, or FGF7. This is a signaling protein that is abundantly expressed when the follicles are developing and is believed to mediate their growth. FGF7 has also been found to inhibit the transition from the anagen phase of the growth cycle, where the hair shaft increases in length, to catagen, where hair growth ceases. So on paper at least, adenosine is expected to produce larger hair follicles that are in their growth phase for longer. But is this actually the case? Well, let's have a bit of a further look. So far, we've had four clinical studies on the effectiveness of adenosine for pattern hair loss. Three of these have been with men and have a combined sample size of 233. The first study recruited 94 men and compared adenosine to minoxidil. They had grade two to five hair loss and were randomly assigned to receive either topical minoxidil 5% or an adenosine solution at 0.75% strength twice daily. Treatment in either group lasted a total of six months. Hair regrowth in excess of 65% of the thinning areas was rated as complete recovery. Between 30 to 65% was relative recovery and under 30% was considered no recovery. After six months of treatment, only one patient in each treatment group showed relative recovery. All the others were scored as no recovery. So pretty disappointing results. But where adenosine outperformed minoxidil was in patient satisfaction. 69.8% of adenosine treated patients were satisfied with the treatment compared to 28.4% for minoxidil. Also, no adenosine treated patient was dissatisfied compared to 14.6% for minoxidil. It's not exactly clear in the paper why the participants were more satisfied with adenosine if it didn't produce much regrowth. As far as we can tell, it's because it was quicker in stopping hair loss. The second study was published two years later out of Japan and compared adenosine to a niacinamide lotion. Niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3 that was used in this study as a weak hair growth agent 
because the ethics committee which reviewed the study rejected a pure placebo arm. So the researchers submitted a protocol for review that compared adenosine to placebo. And the ethics committee, for some mysterious reason, said, nope, you cannot use placebo. You've got to use something active. And so they used niacinamide. 101 men were recruited with hair loss grades two to five randomly treated with either the 0.75% strength adenosine solution or the one containing niacinamide. After six months, 80% of the men in the adenosine group were classified as showing very clear, clear or fairly clear improvement, compared to only 32% for niacinamide. These differences were highly statistically significant, but it is important to note that these global assessments were not solely based on the before and after photos of the entire head, which is ideally what you want. You want trained dermatologists just looking at before and after photos of the entire head and nothing else, and then giving their expert assessment if the hair has improved or not. But here, the dermatologists also took into account the macroscopic data on hair density and thickness. So they looked at the photos of each patient, but they also looked at the hair counts and hair thickness data to give their final assessment, meaning that it was a hybrid assessment and it muddies the waters a little bit. At any rate, adenosine also significantly increased the proportion of thick hairs with a diameter larger than 60 nanometers. But when it came to actual regrowth, the results were less encouraging. Adenosine resulted in an average increase of five hairs per centimeter square. Squared. Now, this wasn't significantly different from the niacinamide group. For comparison, most minoxidil studies report between 15 to 20 new hairs per centimeter squared. In terms of overall self-reported patient satisfaction with the treatment, there was no significant difference between the two groups. The last study with male volunteers was published in 2016 and compared adenosine 0.75% to a placebo. After six months, the 38 men in both groups were assessed on the basis of changes in hair diameter and density, as well as global assessment by a dermatologist. The adenosine treated men showed a significant and highly statistically significant increase of 5.5% in the percentage of thick hairs that were larger than 60 nanometers compared to the placebo group, which saw an 8.5% reduction. Hair density also increased by 4.9 hairs per centimeter squared in the adenosine group, compared to a reduction of 3.8 hairs in the placebo group. There were no significant differences in dermatologists' global photographic assessments between the two groups, meaning the differences between the two treatments were not significant enough to be visible to the naked eye. One of the strong points of adenosine is the almost complete lack of side effects. The most that studies ever report are itching, scaling, or other common topical side effects. But in fact, these are actually quite rare, and about half the studies report that there were no side effects whatsoever. Makes sense when you consider it, it's a naturally occurring molecule that's found all over our body. So guys, here's the bottom line on adenosine. The limited data that we have suggests that it does something against hair loss. It's better than placebo and obviously better than nothing. But the results that you're gonna get are probably quite modest. A small increase in hair density, around a third that of minoxidil, but not sufficient enough to make a cosmetically significant difference. It also has a positive effect on hair shaft thickness, but still not enough to make a difference to the naked eye for most men. So given just how weak it is, it doesn't make sense to use it as your primary treatment for hair loss. If you want to add it to your hair loss routine, then by all means, just don't use it on its own. There are a handful of adenosine products currently on the market, and these are either in topical solutions or shampoos. Some of these are with adenosine only, while others combine it with other active ingredients. Depending on what else is in the bottle, you can get most of these without a prescription. Alternatively, you can always prepare your own solution by mixing pure adenosine with vehicle. All the studies to date use a 0.75% strength, so you can't go wrong with that. Guys, let us know if you've tried adenosine and how has it worked for you. There's hardly anything on adenosine on the online hair loss community, so we'd love some feedback. Guys, if you click the videos on the screen now, you can learn more about the Dermavola Mega Guide, as well as the eight steps we'll use to regrow his hair.